Hello everyone, Jessica here and welcome back to my YouTube channel and blog. So today I am making a couple of cards actually. I'm going to be trying out the string art technique. I've seen this uh, technique around a little bit and I wanted to give it a shot but with my own spin on it. And I'm going to be using some Distress Oxide reinkers and I've mixed together Wilted Violet and Seedless Preserves. What I'm using and what I found that was the easiest for me to use and what I have is Paper Tray Ink Baker's Twine. And I probably cut about 10 inches or so in length and then painted it with the Distress Oxide reinkers. And I just used a paintbrush to get a good coating on. And then I lay down the string in this kind of a curvy, um, kind of a curvy wave pattern. You can, and you can lay this down any way you want. Uh, for what I was going for, I found this to be the best design to lay down the string. So I'm squishing that string in between two pieces of cardstock, and I'm, I'm I am just using a uh, scrap piece of cardstock for the top layer because I find that the top layer does not give the best impression. You could definitely use it if you get a good one. You can do so many different shapes with this and each time it's gonna look completely different. So I have my string covered in ink, it's laid down on a piece of Nina Desert Storm Craft cardstock. And I have used some unicorn pigment ink from Hero Arts to lighten up the center of that cardstock. And now I'm going to push down on my, my Fisker stamp press. And this is an oldie, but a goodie. So I haven't used this thing since I've gotten a stamp platform, but I have found a, another use for it. So that does make me happy. What I found was easiest while doing this is to have enough weight on it that the string doesn't go everywhere and try to pull straight out from the bottom. You can see the string kind of pulling out there. And that'll give you a nice almost a cone look to the, a cone impression. And then I'm going to take my paintbrush that I'm using. I don't, this one's kind of a generic one. Um, it's just something that I've used for like the reinkers and different applications. So, and I'm just using the leftover ink that's on my glass media mat and finishing off some lines that didn't give a full impression and adding in a little bit more detail here and there to darken up some areas. So when I first saw this, I immediately thought of lilies. To me, it looks like a lily flower. So that's what I'm going to be turning these into. I mixed together some peeled paint and Lucky Clover green inks. These are the Distress Side Reinkers again. And adding on a stem base at the bottom of the flower. And I'm just drawing that on with my paintbrush again. And it does a pretty good job of coloring over that purple. You can slightly see it. When everything has had some time to dry, I'm going to use a, a micron pen and just outline the entire image with that pen. And I have a, another scratch piece of paper. And this was, the other side is something that I was trying with the string technique. So that way I'm not wasting all of my paper. <laughs> I'm just going to... I'm going to use that to kind of scribble on because the oxide ink can kind of clog up the micron pen a little bit. So when I notice that it isn't as good of a line, it starts to skip a little bit. I can just scribble on the paper and get all that, um, get all that paint off. But I did three different ones. Um, I won't show you the three different pull string techniques for them. I'm just showing you this one. I'll, th I'll show you the three images I made at the end and how I completed the cards. All right, so once I've gotten the image lined with the black pen, I'm going to add some texture lines with a white jelly roll pen. And I'm just flicking it across that inside portion at the very top. And this will just lighten that up and give it a little more interest up there. I'm going to use some seedless preserve reinker again and just paint the inside or just paint the outside of the the flower and then I'll actually add some color to the top side too keeping it more at the base and keeping that 
top portion a little lighter. I have some Copic Opaque White and I'm going to use a water brush and add in some and do like a cross hatch for the lower portion. And then I use my paintbrush again and just kind of blend that in. And that just adds a lot of different colors and different textures to this. The lilies that I'm thinking of have a yellow center. So I brought out my Kiritake Starry Night watercolors. And these have a large range of different gold watercolors. And I just take my water brush again and I'm using the, I believe that's the champagne gold. I'm going to add a bit of the red gold too, to darken it up. And then after it's dry, I do a black outline over that portion that I painted in. I really like the way the Hero Arts Unicorn Pigment Ink looked on that craft cardstock blended out like that. So I'm taking that again and I'm just going to blend the entire piece around the lily. And I cut that out with a Lawn Fawn scalloped rectangle die. And now I'm going to add some splatter with the white gold watercolor that comes in the Starry Night watercolor set. And I'm using my water brush again. This one is a Prima one. And I'm adding that white gold watercolor to an acrylic block and just piling some on that. And then I can flick it with my water brush onto the piece. And because I did use the Distress Oxide reinkers, it will react with the watercolors and the water that's in the splatter. Now this one is another one that I've done, but I left the design of the lily almost untouched. I did add a little more of the cross hatching at the lower half of the string art, but other than that, I didn't change much of it at all. So this one was actually the very first one that I did that I liked and same, it's the same string art technique. But on this one, I did not use a black pen to create the line art for the bottom loop of the flower. So if you look at the other ones, you'll see that there is a line that goes from the middle portion on the right and it'll go down to the left hand bottom side. This one I just painted over and blended out with, uh, I think these ones are using cracked pistachio and Salty Ocean reinkers. And I really like how this one turned out. This one might be one of my favorites. I was not recording when I made this one, but I wanted to add it in. I used a Concord and Ninth Thank You die. And I'm going to use my T roller to line that up and make sure it's straight. And this is a paper tray ink cardstock. I don't remember I don't remember the name of it right now. I'll have it listed on my blog though. And then I added a little strip of MFT black and white basics. Uh, it's one of their pattern paper packs to the left hand side. Now going back to the scalloped rectangle one, I'm adding that flower layer on onto a Nina desert storm card base. I also used a Concord and ninth sentiment die for this one. This one is part of the painted rose set and it says thinking of you. I didn't have an acrylic block handy, so I just used my phone to hold that down. <laughs> I'm not going to worry about the dots for the eyes and the thinking word. They're so small and there's a lot of white splatter on this piece anyways that I figured it would just kind of blend in and nobody would really see it. So I left that out. For the last card, I'm using a Simon's Stamp Hugs die and I cut it out three times. I cut all, all these off camera to save some time because this video was already pretty long with, with three different cards to show. But I glued all three layers together using my Zig two-way glue pen. And I'm attaching this one to a Nina Solar White card base and adhering the hugs die in the same place basically where the other ones were. So as you can see, you can get quite a few different um, looks to this. They all came out just a little different. If you have a Fiskars stamp press that you haven't used in a long time, maybe you'll pull it out and use it for this technique. And that's it for these cards. I hope you enjoyed today's video. 
you can connect with me on Instagram or email me directly or comment below with any questions you might have about card making. I will always do my best to help. All the products I use today are linked on my blog and help support new products and supplies for this channel. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to see the latest videos from me. I appreciate you and I will see you in the next one. Bye! Meh, meh.